What's up, y'all? My name's Lays, the producer, and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you about the new Logic update and my two killer features. You got to know this if you're a Logic user. So if you haven't been here before, I'm a record producer. I've been producing records for a long time. And anytime I drop a video, I want to put some sort of knowledge that you can apply and level up your game. So if you like that type of information to make dope music, dope beats, dope records, dope mixes, then please consider subscribing. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So first off, if you go to Logic's website, you can just Google Logic Update and it'll take you to this website right here. You'll see the release notes. I recommend checking the release notes, at least go through them, skim through them and see what catches your attention. And then, you know, if there's something that you like, you can try it. Also check out the bug fixes. That's what I do. There's some performance enhancement stuff here. Check that out. Um, but if you notice, like they put in a lot of work. Look at this. This is all in this update, crazy really crazy so a big change in logic is that you can now use 32-bit samples without any issues you can drag them in you can audition them in the browser you can also use them as samples that's not a big deal for me because i didn't really use 32-bit samples and you know it didn't really matter but now you can so it's it's up to date now as far as that goes all right so the first feature i want to show you is the clip gain feature now clip gaining is just raising the volume in the region itself and you could always do this you just click on the region and then go to the side here and then move the gain up or down. And if you notice, the waveform is changing. I don't really remember the waveform changing as smooth as it is right now. So that may be something new, a new animation effect. But um, yeah, it's just tedious when you're when you're working and you need, need to do that. In Pro Tools, you could just go click on the, the region and then click the little fader on the bottom left and adjust it up and down. And that's just better than uh you know if you got to do it for mixing like especially for mixing because when you're mixing you're not just adjusting gain for sake of leveling things out they're also using it to ds if you want to manually ds things you can find the like the s's for example the real sharp sounding s's and you could just cut the region right right around it and then lower it down and really have full control instead of using a deesser but now they've got the new clip gain tool so you can click either up here to see it, right? I can click and select it. Now we've in, we're in clip game mode, where if I'm hovering over any region, I can click and move it up and down instantly, which is kind of cool. But the workflow that I recommend for using this is not to do it that way. Um, I've seen a few people show it online, but I feel like if you don't show a good workflow, like then people might not know how to use it and then they won't use it. So the way I use this is simple so i keep it on pointer and i keep this on marquee at all times marquee is the secondary um, option and for me to activate that secondary option i just hold the command key down so i'm holding it down and you see it turns to the marquee tool so i can highlight things i can click that drag that select you do a lot of stuff you can also select and then click and i'll cut all right so that's how i use the marquee tool hopefully you guys know how to use that already but the way I do things, so let's say this area right here, this is too, too low. I'll just go ahead, select the marquee tool, click. Traditionally, I would just go to the gain, bring it up, right? But it's, it's, I'm doing too much right now, right? So the way I do it now is I hit escape. And if you haven't changed your, this little toolbar to escape, then by default, it's T for you, right? So just hit T, this menu will pop up. I like using escape because my hand is on the left side of the keyboard and it's it's already it's already kind of hovering by the escape key so i don't have to move it i just press it and then my thumb is always by the control i'm sorry by the command key so it's the same thing my hand is there and the main functions kind of live right around here anyway all right so the first thing i do when i'm doing clip gaining is i'll hit escape select the clip gain tool and now i just hold command to go into this marquee tool and then I click and drag, which is cool because it automatically cuts it for me, right? So now I'm gonna do it faster. So let's say I go here, click and drag that up, click and drag that down pretty fast, pretty fast. And I, I really like this feature. All right, so for the next feature, and hands down my favorite feature because I use this all the time, this is definitely a quality of life feature improvement for me, check this out. So right here, if you go to the MIDI effects and by default, when I load up an instrument track, it automatically has this. So if I click and add another software instrument, you'll see it automatically adds um, Scalar and this Velocity MIDI plugin. 
um, but if I click on these two arrows here and go to record MIDI track here, it does something special. So let me show you what happens without. So I'll turn this on and let's put a sound on here. So I've got some chords pulled up. So if I record that, you'll see it's just recording the keys that I'm hitting, which, you know, I want the chords, right? And there was a workaround for the chords. In Scalar, you can drag and drop the chords. Um, and then you're gonna have to go in there and program them and move them around and it kind of sucks. But it's doable and, and it's okay. But now, you don't have to do any of that. So now all you do is you click on these two arrows and you click record MIDI to track here. So now check this out. So now I've got all the MIDI and I can just play it in. Super quick, super simple, and I love it. It's dope. Now check this out. We're going to take it a step further. We can use a different plugin, right? So we're going to go to a different, or actually a MIDI effect is what it's called. But let's go to a different one. So I'll pick... The built-in one uh, that comes with Logic is the uh, the Arpeggiator one. Change the sound up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna boost the octave right here. So we're going to play that in, but in order to play that in, we're going to turn this one off and then we're going to go to the ARP and turn record MIDI to track here. So now it's going to record the ARP in and the MIDI, I'm controlling the MIDI chords with my keyboard, but the ARP MIDI data is what's going to print. All right. So check this out. Pretty sick, right? I mean, you couldn't do that before, and this is this is dope. This is a game changer. Now you can throw that in other plug in, throw that in other plug in instruments, and just do whatever you got to do. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, Apple Logic team. Appreciate that. Anyway, those are my top two favorite updates for the 10.7.5 Logic update. Go ahead and download that, and make sure you back up before you do that. There are instructions on that same update page. In a nutshell, you just zip it up, just zip the old logic file up, put it in a folder, in your applications um, folder, and you'll be good to go. If you need it again, just unzip it and then click on it and you'll be back where you started. If you appreciate this content, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to drop videos that like level you up, give you something new that you can learn and implement right away when you're making your music. All right, y'all, that was it. My name is Lazy Producer. Y'all have a good one. Peace.